Welcome back to Hydra versus Namiga here. Game two coming up shortly as we kick off day one of our Eastern European DPC Tour 3. I mean, how quickly time flies with these shortened DPC seasons, Waga. It's just snapping from series to series, from tour to tour. That's true. That's true. And, you know, also time flies between the patches as we've had the B patch and already the C patch. Things are just going quick right now in Dota, which is not really what I'm used to, man. I'm getting getting a bit nauseous here. Things are going faster <laughs> than the last two years have been pretty slow, I guess. So this, this is great. Great change of pace. I love it. Keep going. And, uh, you know, nothing better than having fresh tournament matches uh, on the day of a patch. That is always exciting to me. Yeah, we've gone from one of those kiddie roller coasters, you know, it's just like slowly going along, a little train plodding on to some real whiplash inducing back and forth with these changes. Yeah, some cool stuff and you know, immediate adaptation. In game one, we saw a lot of very, very quick snappy moves, you know, pinging, ponging from one side of the map to the other by Hydra to gather up you know, double bounty runes, tormentors, taking things away from your opponents while gathering up the resources yourself has been you know, such a big part of Dota as, as it's developed as a game over the past four or five years. Thinking about invading triangle stacks, making sure that the enemy carry doesn't get to farm jungle. Now you've got these additional objectives on top of Roshan moving from one side of the map to the other. A lot to keep track of. I think Hydra did a, a pretty good job you know, outside of just team fighting in terms of map control. Yeah, I think overall their objective-based play was really clean. I mean, we saw them take the immediate Tormentor on the enemy side, tip it back, take their own Tormentor on 20. I think that set them up a lot for success. I mean, that's... 2,800 gold just in the two shards that you're getting there and you're also getting experience so the, the value of making these plays quickly and finding a way to coordinate it is really really huge and I think teams will be rewarded for having a good understanding of how to uh, make those moves so we'll see here in the uh, next game if Miga can uh, you know show similar determinations of uh, playing towards these like like we call them just objectives on the map right there are so many things now and straight out with the Doom. And Amiga saw, you know, how Cloud, even though his laning stage wasn't the best, a few deaths to his name in the first five or six minutes. Still had a, you know, a great transition into late Ten game. If these games do remaining. drag out, Midas and Devour keeps you in contention with the top net worth five heroes. Gets you those aura remaining. items very nicely. Yeah. But second pick, the double pick for Hydra. What, what are you looking for? Uh, I first I, I just want to comment as well that I'm happy to see Medusa be banned again here even though she's nerfed you know keep that hero out of the games for now I, <laughs> she was only she was only relevant for like a few weeks now and I'm already tired of her she's so boring with her uh, you know unkillable nature um, looking at reactions against this uh, doom coming in I wouldn't be too surprised to see them go for something like the Terrorblade themselves and, and try to play maybe not in just the 4 Protect 1 style of Terrorblade, but maybe use um, the fact that he has illusions. Even if you Doom him, it's not the end of the world. You need to play around uh, Doom. It's just you need to not end up in full 4 Protect 1 strat. And I love the opening here. You take the Keeper of Light, keep it open. You know, you have a lot of combos that can play into that. And then you have the Storm as well into it. Storm against Doom, yeah. If you get Doomed, it's really bad for you, but you're also zipping around a lot, Ten especially with extra mana from Coddle, that you can be hard to target. And mm. again, a hero that can buy Lincoln Five Sphere very easily, remaining. and Doom doesn't really um, do too well against it unless he builds or fights a creep. But Radiant no Doom battle. wants to give up War Stomp. You always want to stomp. Yeah, there are a bit of an answer there. We've seen this Puck you know, utilizing against the Storm another way to, to keep tabs on him. Make sure you've got that Dream Coil to lock him down. And then it gives you layers to the team fight, right? So you can have either or initiate. Puck or Doom can start Ten things off and then remaining. allow that additional form of, uh, of control to come in for the second wave. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, that's a nice Stop. thing. I mean, that's basically what we saw Hydra have in the last game. So Namiga are kind of taking, you know, a little bit of their approach here in the Dire draft. Uh, they're going to ban out the Terrorblade themselves. So it kind of goes in line with what I was saying here, that they still respect the Doom or the TB, even if they have Doom. Like, it's not really a solution. Because normally, uh, even though we just saw him lose to it, TB is a good counter to Doom. You have all those solutions uh, fighting, and you can't really just uh, be happy after you Doom the main target. But Radiant team we'll see how they head into the draft here. I think the Miga are going to do the same thing that we saw them do last game and focus a lot on banning yeah, carry on options. Um, but that will also be telling for what they're going to try and run overall, just reading into the bans. Maybe they'll ban out the Monkey King again, you know, don't want to have that matchup for the Monkey King uh, Ten versus the remaining. Doom. Nice, some of those really strong laning Five heroes. Seconds remaining. 
That's basically what the second phase has become, just ban laden carries. Ban. Yeah. These underlords and the dooms, like, okay, we, we're first phasing these prominent heroes, now it's time to protect them. Yeah. Getting rid of Naga, wouldn't be surprised to see PL, honestly, as well as an option. I think against PL, though, it can be really nice to go Aghanim's Doom. Even though you have the same thing, he's an illusion carry, right? He clumps a lot. Ten he, be, he can spread out his illusions. Naga, she can also spread out a lot in the fight. But Peel, if you get Aghanims on Doom and you jump in and you have like Shivas or something, you're gonna find the real one and you're going to just stay on top of him quite easily. So uh, it can be a decent tool, but they might still ban that as well. And then what about Hydra? What are you looking at removing? Like double core pickup from Namiga can be exploited. Are there any supports you want to remove, or are they going to mm. ban carries themselves? Radiant team. Uh, I think, yeah, I, I was going to say, I think they want to ban stuff that's comboing with the Dream Coil, right? They want to okay. start getting rid of stuff that combos into the team fight and not give uh, a crazy, like, overall combination draft from uh, Namiga. So getting rid of the Disruptor is a great start. Uh, that is also a problematic remaining. hero for Storm Spirit at all stages of the game. It can be very frustrating to deal with. Five um, seconds remaining. So that's a, a good Dire opening. I wouldn't ban. be surprised to see them keep it going with the the support bands or utility bands, let's say. Whereas Namiga, they pan out the Stark. Again, a hero that lanes really well against Doom. Makes sense. And he's a good protection hero. Like, he still has that depth shroud, right? Protect Ten against the, the Doom and the Puck initiation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Slark Shard is one of the best shards Five in the game. It is remaining. ridiculously good, I would say. Um, almost to the point that I can't believe it's a shard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's pretty nutty. Oh, one more ban for Hydra before we start unfolding the rest of these drafts. If Silencer, Disruptor, both, you know, like you say, combo heroes of the puck. Also very good against the Storm, that, uh, that Silence ability. I'd love to see something like Vench get, uh, you know, some recognition again now as well with the possibility of saving and swapping people, you know, but during the Doom or something. Water. It can yeah, also get you out of trouble if you get coiled on Storm Spirit. It's an option here for Hydra that they could go for, uh, but she's not really one of the most popular heroes. Radiant They're going to ban out the CM themselves and go for Rubik. This is more stock standard for the patch. Uh, you have an insta lift now as well. Very good against Puck. You have that insta disable. And of course, there's already amazing spells to steal. And I guess you, you kind of know your mid lane matchup, so you're not going to be changing anything there. Remaining. Both of these supports are very flexible. The Kotl and Rubik can go either Five or lane, depending on, remaining. again, the matchups that you'll be looking at now. You know, Namiga have to reveal something, whether it is their off lane plus one for the Doom to be laning with, or if it's their safe lane. One of the lane matchups is going to be revealed. And you can start thinking about Radiant how you want to be matching up against Silencer. Them. Silencer. Okay, so Silencer. Silencer. Okay. So they have three heroes now, all possessing Silence against Storm. So this is uh really gonna be at a game where storm has to be mindful where he jumps and when um Sanser did get nerfed in the recent patch but very Ten minor seconds, nerf it's five remaining. five more mana cost on the glaives but a lot of support silencer doesn't even go for the glaives that much just the qe build. and uh as monkey king was not banned out so they're gonna grab it themselves hmm i'm not sure about this pick because this is a Monkey King when you don't really know too much about Hydra's side lanes. You just know Caudal and Rubik. I guess you could put it back. mid against the Storm Spirit and side lane the Puck if you want. But normally you want to see a good matchup for the Monkey King mm -hmm. when you draft it, I feel. Yeah, is it like a flex to position 4 maybe then? Mm, it, it could be, it could be for sure. And I've got a question. How, how does Global Science work with BKB now? Like Ten let's say Storm Spirit BKB is and zips in, you put Global on him. It doesn't affect him until BKB ends, right? I think remaining. global fully affects. Okay. Uh, I haven't tried against... Not too many people even, uh, you know, have been having BKBs in the games that I've been playing. I've been playing a bit of Silencer, but it, it fully pierces um, It fully pierces the debuff immunity, so okay. it should work. Uh, it's just like you can put last word on an enemy, and that's not going to silence until it ends. It will still do some damage, though. Uh, and that's the thing, BKB is so much more unreliable now in the new patch than it has been before. And I love that. Before, Dota was a very simple game of just, you know, your core player, buy BKB. Your support, maybe you buy BKB too. <laughs> but now, 
you actually have to think a lot. Because Dire if you BKB, you're not immune to everything. You could still get hit by just magic damage. Like Storm will be able to right-click you and still dish out nice right-click damage with his uh, overload into BKB. Much more, much more situational than it used to be. It really, it really was buy BKB or lose game. Yeah, Ten pretty much. Remaining. I think it was a very elegant solution, to be honest. But it takes a lot of Five relearning because mechanically, what works and what doesn't, like the Scotty thing, and there, there are a number of other things that I'm still like processing. Um, so it's a bit, you know, we run into a problem with teaching an old dog to sit right now. Like I, I knew how to sit. I was sitting in a very good way with how the mechanics work. And now I have to relearn. But, now um, you're missing a leg, and now you've got to figure yeah. out how to sit with it. <laughs> Amputating me, and then like, okay, we can do it now. Sit. <laughs> God yeah, damn. Plenty of treats to try and figure out that Radiant one. Ice Frog is harsh, man. And it Techies really get is. banned out here by Hydra, as they uh, don't want to allow that one to come through here. And the classic combo of Underlord Rubik taken out with the Underlord ban. Mm -hmm. So one of those strong offlane duos gone. Also a little bit surprising to see that they went for the Alchemist, considering he got quite a few nerfs in the C patch. He's one of the heroes that got hit a little bit harder, I would say, uh, in terms Five of nerfs. Not remaining. really like Medusa, but still pretty significant. Dire team bad. Yeah, like every spell got nerfed, basically. Yeah, a lot of... Concoction cooldown, yeah, breed. The stun build, we saw a lot of support Alchemist in general as well in high-level games. Uh, and that is nerfed now with the cooldown, but also the greed... Uh, getting nerfed just means that all types of Alchemist remaining. is a little bit worse. Still playable though, definitely not unplayable, Five just uh, perhaps not the strongest. But this is where we, we talked a little bit in uh, game one. Do you stick to your draft? Do you know uh, what you're cooking? You know, Do you have some good stuff already? Is it bad enough now after a nerf that you don't go for this type of approach anymore? Or should you just run it because you've tried it and you kind of know what it works? I, I like Hydra's uh, four heroes overall here. They're pretty good fighting heroes. They have great lockdown. Radiant you said that you like heroes uh, that have a lot of stuns and control. Both yeah, yeah, these teams have great stuns and control. Yeah, yeah, so it's a team, team fighting game, that's for sure. We saw it in the previous match. And this one, no different. So with the Bloodseeker pick, looks like Monkey King is going to go four. Maybe, maybe the Doom, but we'll figure that out as we get to it. I think and one more pick four. for Hydra. Yeah. I think Monkey 4 with a 3 do mid, mid yeah. book and then 5 Ten Silencer with the carry remaining. Bloodseeker most likely. They still do have to show their last pick here though, so maybe Five they're leaving it fully remaining. open how uh, they're gonna lane it as well. Because uh, what do Hydra want to do now? They want to have a hero that can lane comfortably into the Bloodseeker possibly. Oh, okay, okay. Al three? So this is uh, 3 Alchemist then. Very cool. Yeah, we had some funky bans at the end. The TA was banned, the Clinks was banned. Yeah, both yeah. drafts. Pretty team. open and flexible to the very end. Yeah, I mean, that just shows the teams are equally, you know, respecting all possibilities here as we are. That it's not set in stone when it's going to be. Oh, I think Ambulance coming for some, one of these teams. We'll see which one it's going to be uh, after this game. Um, yeah, Bloodseeker spilling blood everywhere. Earth is munching on people. There's all sorts of casualties in the forest. It's coming for terribly from last game. It's a little bit too oh. late, man. <laughs> Poor guy. He's done for. Dead on arrival, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, definitely a quirkier draft from Namiga than, than I'm used to seeing, but they've definitely got lots of elements, like you say, of, of control, team fight, big circle spells. I'm a big fan of circles in Dota, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know, you've got Wukongs, you got Global Science, is the whole map circle. Puck with the Dream Coil and Blood Rite, they can stack all these circles on top of each other. But is I think the map Hydra... a circle, though? Isn't the map a square, Gareth? A square is just another form of circle, why <laughs> It's true. <laughs> true. Uh, yep, yep. If you add a lot of squares and then you rotate them a little bit, you can make a circle out of yes. squares. You've hit wow. the nail on the head. Rot rotation and translation. Yes. Those those are the key terminology in geom geometry, right? You can turn any shape into any other shape you want. Just, you know, just flip it through uh, through another dimension, another, another axis, and you're, you're fine. But uh, do, you, do you favor one or the other? Um, I think for me... I like the draft that Hydra have here, but I've seen Bloodseeker oh, no, be very no, successful. No, Waga, I meant circle or square. Do you oh, oh. <laughs> oh, circle or square. Oh, yeah. More of a triangle. You know, I'm a TA player. I'm very, very much for the triangle, which no longer exists. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very beautiful shape as well. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll jump into game two here. But first, a quick message from EGB. You're one of our sponsors. 
Bets on esports, bets on streamers, impressive bonus system, welcome bonus up to $600, cashback, artifacts, regular promotions, daily giveaways. Try yourself as a bookmaker. Great lines. EGB.com. More than just a bookmaker. Prepare for battle. And welcome back to game two, as I can give Wag a little bit of time now to give a serious answer to the question I posed. Yeah, so earlier. triangles are just, you know, better because they... <laughs> oh, yeah, you meant the game. Uh, yeah, I think... <sighs> I think I like uh, Hydra's lineup a little bit more, but I've seen a lot of success from Bloodseeker lately. Uh, just feels like a really nice carry in the current patch. And uh, I think maybe this, you know, mass of silence and control can prove to be difficult for the Storm. I mean, they've definitely addressed Warwick on the Storm Spirit here in their draft. Maybe they addressed it too much. We'll have to see how it plays out. Sometimes, you know, you overthink one thing and uh, ends up being the Ursa just taking over the game, right? Mm. So it could be something else happening. So what, what kind of conversations do you think Warwick is having with his team? Like, is this going to be an individual effort to protect himself against all the silences? Or is he telling, you know, Happy on the Cottle, please buy four staff and Lotus and, <laughs> and all these things? I, I think it's great for him that he has a Cottle. Because Kotto is one of those heroes that can just easily slot in some Lotus Orbs and Four Staffs and what have you. You know, one of the best saving. You can also go for another uh, thing here. You have the Rubik. If you get early Tormentor, you can get that shard for Rubik for Telekinesis. Lift people out, you know, you can save people with um, the Telekinesis. Um, All right, yeah. So that's also a possible approach. But yeah, he a lot of pressure is still on him individually here. He just has to not get caught out too much on Storm because no matter how many saves you have, I mean, against spirit. Doom, against Coil, you might still go down uh, if you're not careful. Yeah, and even with the game one victory, the Hydra still the underdogs in terms of the odds. Let me get out in front 1.5. To them. It was a hard fought battle in the first game. That was a, like really anyone's game. 50, 58 minutes, I think, we ended up on. So uh, we'll see how round two is going to go here. Yeah, he's dead close. Good first deny. Marine starts off his laning phase very well. The puck against Storm, always an interesting one. Yeah, it's a very uh, high skill cap matchup. How you harass and how you position. And Marine definitely a very mechanically gifted mid player. Um, We'll see how he can handle this lane. Bottom lane, though, going to be uh, a, a lot less mechanically interesting as we see uh, the pull shenanigans are already beginning here on the alchemist side. He uh, does not want to lane fairly against the Bloodseeker. Right, so this this was something that a lot of people felt was oh going on. Oh, wow, the, he what? Down. He just died. He went too close, took a lot of harassment and got grenaded and actually just died. Yeah, he did. Under acid spray, phase bolt, grenade. A ton of damage on that silencer. Oh my goodness, yeah, first blood. Going in the way of Hydra. But this is this is something that, you know, again, a lot of people I, I was talking to think in this big patch that we're going to change the way that you could manipulate the creep waves. Oh, so, so bad just getting gone on again. Is oh, no, not again. Dead one more time. No, he survives. Ooh. Barely. Lil, he's desperate for it. He was itching for the kill. But now you've put so bad in a position here where he's got no HP, no, just Tango to rely salve. on. Yeah. No salve, yeah. He's staying so low HP here now, and I mean, he has these three mangles, but the HP region is nerfed on those, right? You kind of wish that he had a salve there instead in this situation. Unfortunately, he's got that tower regen to, to kick in and help heal him up, so he's not in such bad shape. He can stick around in lane. But yeah, creep manipulation. You know, it's become a big part of Dota 2, these uh, wave, wave pulling. Is that something that belongs in the game? I I find it annoying, honestly. <laughs> uh, maybe because I'm a carry player, it's usually favoring the off laners. You know, mm. creep pulling shenanigans are not really uh, mid or uh, carry player's forte. It's how off laners deal with unfavorable matchups. And maybe it should be in the game. Uh, you know, they did mitigate it a little bit. You have to be so close to a tower to be able to do it. And you can't do it on first creep wave and so on. But, um, I, I personally, I'm against it. I, I find it to be just a, annoying. Uh, I want to have the lane play out, you know, pulling creeps, yeah. that's fine. But pulling the creeps all the way around, go behind the tier two and tier three tower, you know, go between there. That stuff irritates me a little bit. It was kind of funny when we used to have, you know, the tinies and the earth spirits doing it. It's like, yeah, they get to level two. We get to play the lane after that. And quite often it just continues on forever. Or mid lane, Warwick, fairy fires. Yeah, and Malorine so doesn't fall for it. Both of them sitting on like 150 HP for the past two minutes, honestly. Yeah, they've been trading very evenly. 
On the side lanes, we see, uh, you know, the three minute mark pa picking up those healing lotuses. Stupendous! Oh, yeah. yeah, we also had a courier tonight bottom. You know, Lil got that first blood, killed a violent courier. So that was Magic Wand recipe and Blades of Attack, which got delayed quite significantly. Yeah, it's that, that cliff uh, ward is really, really big, actually. Um, it sees far enough that he could get the courier snipe with it. Having control over that cliff is very useful for bottom lane. Even with these advantages, you know, Cloud's last hit value is not looking super good. Bloodseeker 20 and 8, Alchemist 8 and 1. I'll lift back the Bloodseeker to send him back. Concoction channel, but oh, self stuns. No. Now he's in trouble. Cloud and Lil Dyer's both sent back to their tier 1. So the free lane reign continues for Violent. Uh, he's, Bloodseeker uh... with a blood grenade, yes. This is starting to get very, very hard to even approach this lane because everyone is getting harassed on side lanes. When you have Bloodseeker in your team, you know that you should harass your uh, your player in the lane so that Bloodseeker has an easier lane. And that's what they're doing. They're trying to keep the HP as low as possible on everyone. And Bloodseeker is just zooming. Yeah, I mean, Warwick in that mid lane has even bought raindrops to try and keep himself topped up. I needed the trying not to drop too low. And Cloud. Oh, I didn't think about that. They have a little combo. Uh, Bloodseeker and uh, Silencer. They might actually dive and get a kill here, possibly. At least gonna force out the stun. Yeah, might still go in. for it. Look for uh -oh. Lil now instead. Oh, no, yeah, you're right. The blood right with the arcane curse. Exactly. Damn Lil. A little bit of a combo because you can extend the, the curse top. We see a pushback here. Bottle. Setting up a kill. Grenade. Oh, Charlie. Stop Taking down advantage of Doom. Where, oh, was yeah, the, they... where was the Monkey King? He came bottom. They also have a bigger combo that I really love and I saw used in NA DPC. And that is Doom and Silencer. If you Doom someone and curse them, that's just damage, baby. For such a long time. Arcane Curse extends to the entirety of the Doom duration. And, you know, with Doom not having tremendous damage on its own, it's usually taking people down with, like, Scorched Earth and running them down. If you add Curse on top of it, it just makes it so much more potent. It just, it just keeps going. It gets deeper and deeper. I mean, Puck has a Silence as well, right? Yeah. They've got... Oh my god, it's all, all about the Silencer. Ways. It silences all the way down. He was Never their ending. secret carry. I mean, Cloud right now relegated to jungling on this Alchemist. Desperate to try and finish off his Vanguard. And bot lane's not playable anymore, so it looks like Hydra gonna shift their efforts into mid. Puck is level 6 now, and Storm's still level 5, so the call is there. On to Warwick. Dead, and so bad with Hellscream. Looking at Lil and Happy. Not gonna follow through on it. But he denied the Arcane Rune right in front of... Okay, uh... Well, nice, nice rotation there by the Monkey King coming in as well. And we see how hard it can be to be Storm when you get caught out like, against Coil. Getting value from it immediately here as uh, the puck hits level 6. This is uh, good rotations by Namiga. And it's going to be easy for them to rotate because bottom lane is already kind of decided. Maybe something going away top. Mm, can't even finish off the Monkey King. And he's got a salve to stay around in lane as well. I've got to get Kami off the ground here as quickly as possible. Seven minutes coming up. We see attempted steal here, body blocking it. Is Hellscream chasing down Lil instead now? He's got boobs when days though. He's probably fine. And Lil is immediately pinging the other side of the map, saying, "Somebody get look, get over there." Cloud the will be happy room, to please, take Cloud. it. He needs experience right now, and he can't really lane anyway. So, he's gonna head over and take that. Got his vanguard what? now, but. I mean, 19 CS, minute 7 on Alchemist. He is not having a great time. I'm going to have to start looking for these stacks. It's going to get congested in that dire jungle, though. A storm having to back up and farm a couple of medium camp stacks himself. And at the same time, they're also going for a Battle Fear on the Ursa, so he kind of wants those stacks for himself when Battle Fear is complete. So I think right now, the Migar just fully in the driver's seat of this game, even though it's 2-2 two two in score. Rick? Yeah, getting hunted. Another coil, another kill. At least he got his neutral item before he died. He dropped the neutral item as he jumped away, so he was running back to pick it up because he didn't want to uh, use that to the enemy there. I don't, don't give away free right. tokens. And Valuable amazing. stuff in those vending machines. Those free tokens. Eight minute rune. It's nerfed, right? Because if you get a token from the enemy, you don't get more options. You just have one more token. Nobody gets, like, to look twice for neutral items. So you just 
lose an item on the enemy, but you don't have one more yeah. uh, option on your team. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, pre like previously, you just got a free item. Also so hard to steal now because, you know, the auto send home. Also found out a thing that I really dislike about it that I think they should maybe change. When you play post 5, if you drop a neutral item and you're in jungle, you don't want to take it, right? Because your carries deserve it or your mid deserves it. So you send it home, but then you're gonna send home every other item you find as well, even though you're the only one without an item. So if you find the fifth one and you're the one who finds it, it's gonna send it home automatically. I just keep sending items home non-stop. Burying them back to base. Mid tower. Threatened here. Coddle trying to hold on to it. Oh, this is a level 4 monkey and a level 5 sounds are pushing a mid tier one with no catapult wave. And zip in and zip uh, out. That did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you have what achieved nothing. Total of 50 damage? We're back where we started. Oh, nothing, nothing gained and a lot of mana lost, but he's got the chakra magic from Happy at least. Blood Seekers here joining in. They're really pressing the issue, aren't they? They want to coil. They want to coil and get Bloodseeker in there. Oh, they cut Monkey down from the treetops. And quite a bit of damage onto Hellscream. Still alive with the Mischief and turn around. The Bounce Strike inside the Blood Right. Storm Spread gets away from it, though. Even though he's ruptured, they'll get on top of Sobat and kill the Sansa. Vaan is hunting for Rubik, but they've never enough damage committed. to finish him on his own. This is a deep dive, which Namiga are going to pay for dearly. Bloodseeker, Sansa, and now maybe even Maureen. The puck is going to have the draw to the open, a long ball in. Warwick has found his target, he's latching on to this puck. A little more and they'll finish oh. him off, a double kill for the Storm. Wow, that turned out so amazing for his side of Hydra. They went a little bit too deep trying to, you know, salvage there. As Monkey King gets cut down from the tree, they had the save a friend syndrome, right? Like, oh, we, we gotta we gotta help our friend, he, he's in trouble. But then the initiation was really hard for him to follow up on. And... Hydra had the advantage of just sitting back under your towers. The towers did a lot of work. Even the tier 2 tower got some shots in there. Um, and that was exactly what they needed to get control in this game. Yeah, also a little bit of like gamb gambler's fallacy, right? Like they've set up with 3-4 heroes mid and you get caught in a situation like we're set up for this. We've you know, kind of invested into this scenario where we want to fight and press forward. Pot committed to, to the fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah fully pot committed. <laughs> But in the end, the, the showdown value wasn't too, it wasn't too great for Namiga. See the odds shifting ever so slightly. I think that's a little boost to Hydra's chances. Yeah, Hydra trying to boost their chances more by going for a nice deep smoke play here. Going Radiant's in, dropping some wards. And looking for possibly a carry. And there is Violent nearby. They see Blood Rites. They're gonna go for him. Yeah, ball lightning straight on top. Illuminate, but the global's there. Radiant's Coverage and safety for Violent for now. The solar bind is so incredibly annoying, though no, slowing through a crawl, but he gets himself behind his tier 2 tower, eventually gonna die here, oh, with a final ball lightning, they get the finishing touches. Lil dead to head scream in the end, and a career snipe for Warwick, but he's completely out of mana. Oh he, oh, he gets just enough mana for TP, you're right, so he's away from there, with no stuns from Namiga. Yeah, bound the strike is such a long cooldown stun, so I'm not gonna be able to do that again there. Gets out safely. Still a very good pickoff for the side of Hydra then. And meanwhile, look at Cloud farming efficiently in the jungle with his uh, pull onto a stack camp here, being Alchemist as well, getting so much money from this. So uh, he's finding a little bit of time to get back into it. Normally, you want to be ahead of the enemy in gold, though. You don't want to be behind when you're an Alchemist. You want to have the massive net worth. So he desperately needs this time. Oh yeah, catch up time for him. I mean, Ursa, 12 minute Battle Fury with Treads and Wraith Band. He's Kami feeling yeah, incredible this game. Yeah, and he's gonna go for a very stock standard item build here, going for Battle Fury into the Blink Dagger. And Dyer's by the time that he's farming here, attack. it looks like he might even have something like a 14, 30 or a 15 minute ba uh, Blink Battle Fury. And that would be a fantastic timing. If he uh, can get some stacks going here and farm those. Oh, I, I like this now. We keep saying numbers. I heard the I heard the word fourteen, and that's mm -hmm. triggered my brain to be like fourteen is divisible <laughs> by seven. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, the true. Runes are coming. True. The wisdom runes even. Oh no, monkey is stuck on a cliff now because he's getting hit. Yeah, gets out the golden dragons. And the storm oh, spirit so doesn't quite end. finish him, so Lil has to do the bit of cleanup job. He stole Wukong's command as well, which is a pretty powerful spell on Rubik because you get those ranged attacks. Every single clone has the attack. Rubik attack range. Rubik statues. That's a bit, a bit, a bit scary for Sobad down here. A lone silencer defending 
a tier one tower. He just wants experience down here for now. He's just like, please let me keep farming here. Don't dive me. As the rest of his team is just farming. So yeah, he has to be careful. Storm, of course, already full mana again with his Caudal. Helping him out. What are we looking at for the rest of the boys here? We got Midas Vanguard on the Doom. Looks like he's gonna go for a pipe next. Not going for that second yes. item off Terrain. Read play. And Bloodseeker, who had such a tremendous first seven, eight minutes, finishes his Maelstrom now, 14 minutes in. Yeah, Nothing, pretty uh, worse delayed. For that. I mean, it's the rotations. The dive mid didn't work out at all. And then he got Radiant punished by a nice deep smoke attack. gank as well. Now, speaking of smoke ganks, Paulo is going to be a target. Well, he's got a power shield on him. What a tanky Cothal. Fairy fire, not even going to be used. Just lets himself die. Knows that he's traded his life for a global silence and a coil. Oh, Pavis. You know what they got, Gareth? They're playing the patch. They made it so Pavis can block spell physical damage. You know what that means? You can self-stun yourself on Alchemist now and block it with Pavis. They oh, have yes. the synergy. Amazing. Just amazing. Is there anything else cool that works on? Uh, I mean... Like, does... Do exorcism ghosts count as spell physical damage? Because I know yeah. they used to. Yeah, they're, they're physical. Yeah, so Pavis should block exorcism for a little bit. Uh, I mean, back in the day, we used to have uh, Beastmaster axes and Lesh Diabolic Edict that were like composite damage. There's bits yep. of physical in there, but that's long gone now. True. Mid. Dive onto so bad here. Easy. Easy. Rune storm. And then over towards the jungle, Cloud inside the double Wukong's command. Rubik and Monkey King both this launching their so weird. armies out there. One's green, one's golden, but the Monkey King will be the one to die. Big reaction from Hydra, bringing numbers up there. As a bit of a lurking Kotal is going to get ruptured up. Happy has wandered into the grasp of Vazia, Malreen, and Violent, but he's a tanky Kotal. Look yeah. at him. He's, he's walking all leading, along. buddies. my team. Oh, a coil for me. Double ulties again for the Kotal. Well worth his time. It's worth it. Oh, there's the self stun. Didn't combo it, though. This combo is dead. Oh, unfortunate. Well, they can't finish off Roshan. Ursa wanted to kick it off. But Namiga are all in the vicinity. They really use a lot of abilities to bring down the Caudal, but without him, I don't think the Hydra feel confident enough to go for that Rosh. So now, just a little bit of a standoff here. They were, they were thinking, oh, they, yeah, they saw the Bloodseeker TPing out. They know there's no Bloodseeker here. They do. They have Doom available on... On the Ursa, possibly, but it's a tough fight to take. Like you said, no Bloodseeker. How do you engage this? I guess he's going for the portal. He's coming through. Puck shows mid, but has a TP scroll for tier one top. They want to fight Roshan this. Roshan down to half health. The Monkey King being hunted, but he gets off his tree in time, and the Global Sans is there. Nice Vazia. Moves. He's trying to go in and doom someone, but Lil and his happy Cothal have backed into the tree line. Everyone just skirting the edges of the fight while the Storm Spirit, using pretty much all of his mana to zip in and zip out, needs that Chakra Magic desperately. Yeah. They're trying to control the portal while denying the Bloodseeker to come through. He's done a good job, like, trying to sit on it. So if he goes through, he will be all alone. They're gonna get the Aegis. Ooh, they got the Concoction. Just in time, and that long range stun onto the Doom. Pound the Strike doesn't save them. There's a defensive coil from Malreen, but he's already spent his Illusory Orb. The counter coil, the Rubik stole it, snapped it on the puck, gets the takedown. Lil having a grand game here. Yeah, he's doing great. And I mean, also a big thing here is that Cloud is having big impact in these fights, right? The Alchemist is leading the way a lot. He's going, being that frontliner, offlaner hero that you want to see. And uh, with the Solar Crest and Vanguard, He's still being effective, even though he was so shut out in the laning stage. He's found his way back into the game. And I think a lot, all of it just comes back to that one dive on mid. The Miga have to be kicking themselves a bit, because they are the ones who were supposed to be in the driver's seat. They were supposed to be, you know, dictating how the game is going to go, and now they just lost an early ages over on Storm. The storm just keeps going in. This poor, so bad silencer. I won't get away from this one. Absolutely not. Oh yeah, yeah raindrops pop. So. Time's up for him. Looks pretty ridiculous, just Coddle following him around non-stop, giving him mana. The, the storm is really never running out of gas here. Hey, we had the Radiant's same thing during the, the Major, right? This Pugna Storm opening duo. If you have second pick, you just snap out the Pugna Storm. Oh yeah. 
looks like we used battery. to see the Wisp, Wisp Storm as well. Yeah. It was popular for a while. Well, multi-angle approach here onto the Doom. Alchemist runs straight at him through the lane and the rest of them wrap around from behind. Hell screams Monkey King trying to cut waves up top, alleviate a bit of this pressure that's coming. Now, this game feels like it's it's really snowballing out of control. Yeah, this is this is very rapidly turning into a game where Hydra are just doing whatever they want. I think maybe they're trying to respect them until the Aegis timing runs out, but look at these catches, man! How is he jumping this far for a silencer? And it's gonna work out too. Hey, he's shielded up, he's got mana for days. All his mana's back somehow. <laughs> Full mana. Chakra magic, baby. Yeah, That's a good spell. Marine. He's at least gonna get a tier one. Oh, is he? Oh, the glyph is gonna scare him. And the stolen coil for the second time. Kami can't get up to the high ground, but the lift is there to try and, yeah, allow Lil to take the kill. Yeah, Lil is having a fantastic game here. He's doing a great job in top, trying to get some farm here. Doom going in, wants to do the Alchemist. Yeah, I'm not sure about this one. He is alone and dead, it looks like. He popped his pipe. And he'll eventually fall. Warwick has to spend a bit of mana to secure it. I mean, he stays alive for a long time, but he kind of charged into everyone alone there. He didn't have any ally nearby. He, that, You know what that was? That was the Midas plus Devourer ready. It was the, I have to do this. Uh, I must. Off cooldown time. Radiance oh, what is it? Tower Nearly is 20 minutes? Tormentors soon. Also, and Cloud was runes. busting out the, the forbidden farming technique that my boy Uker has to, showed to me, doing the self-stun on Ancients so as Alchemist to farm faster. Oh, uh, yeah. This is, this is advanced techniques. Do not do this as a Pulse 1 Alchemist, but if you play another position, you can actually farm with unstable concoction. There's one in there. Oh, very quick Tormentor, isn't it? Shard and for the Rubik now. That's the one that they wanted as well. As we mentioned, good way to save people if they get caught out. But looking at the game, how it's been going, they don't feel like they need a lot of saving right now. Oh, the, the, yeah, the saving defensive tools is allowing them to play more aggressively and dive on people. Protection for aggression. Migard is waiting for this peak of the Unbloodseeker. That's the one tool that they are kind of lacking right now. Other than that, they smoke up as four, trying to go together. Midas of cooldown. Radiant are storm. Oh, he has Aegis. There's Radiant's no way you kill him twice. I don't think so. Yeah, Aegis Radiant and Haste. Are scanning. Uh, the Radiant runes are coming up out. and uh, Hydra are going for it. They want the uh, double wisdom. They're gonna get it. And now maybe they go for their own Tormentor as well. As they back out and concede some map control back to the side of uh, Minika here. Oh, Hell Screen wow. doesn't, doesn't see them in time. Are so close. Not quite gonna catch them. And of course, there is Storm Spirit Shard and almost the corner going down. And, and the Rubik. I think Rubik had to pop his wand there. I don't know, something. <laughs> you know, when you support, that's also why it does so much damage to support. Um, the fact that the Torment is still bugged, it does physical damage mostly back, right? Because carries are hitting and mm. supports have low armor. So that's why supports are dying so fast, whereas the Ursa didn't look like he took much damage at all. Um, so if it did magical damage only, it would be more evenly distributed. <laughs> times left. Oh, Lil being a bit cheeky. Radiant's middle tower is under Showing up at top, throwing some spells at the wave to slow down the push from the Miga. A pretty solid lead here, Hydra. Not gonna get Radiant's caught up, you know, filtering in one by one, making sure that every fight they take now is gonna be a 5v5. Yeah, they already have a Bissel Blade on Ursa. Oh my god. But they're going top. They're portaling through. They've been spotted though. The portal. Trying to bring as many as they can up here. Vision being removed. And Cox and Channel. Alchemist Silence though, so self stuns. Good lift back, creates a bit of a gap between Cloud and the rest of the pack, and now the jump in for Kami straight onto the Bloodseeker, nearly finishes him off in that Abyssal Blade timing. But he gets turned on, and he's not the one with Aegis. He's inside the Wukongs, trapped and stuck in the turnaround from Violent, but there's the storm. The big man comes, they lose their Ursa, but they're gonna get so much more off the back of this. Doom and Monkey King both falling low, and the chase is on, trying to catch up the Vazia. A little bit more to take him down. Yeah, Malarine does escape through the gate, but four of them all die. 
As soon as it goes down as well, this alchemist is just doing so much work, I feel. Even though the Ursa went down there, the control and just chain stuns here happening from the side of uh, Hydra are really effective. You see there, of course, he was the second highest damage. Ursa did a good job bringing down the Bloodseeker's HP pool really low before he died. But, of course, he couldn't survive when Doom and uh, Wukong's command both got dropped on him. Still, though, convincing fight for Hydra again. Yeah, it's like the, the, the state of the game we're in right now. It feels like every fight, Namiga have to spend three or four ulties to kill one hero. Yeah, no, they, they're just lacking right now. They're not and really that's having... BKB. Yeah, Storm, Storm BKB is going to mean that he will be much harder to burst as well. It's completed with that ancient camp. Right now, they're getting so much value. They're farming Ancients on both sides of the map. That's like the dream. Ancients are such a big source of experience in gold, and if you can control both the enemy and your own Ancients... I mean, there are four Ancient camps on the map. It's a lot. A lot of gold and experience. Another move here. Namiga. Looking like they might want to try and... Ah, they don't actually even have a smoke. They, they move as though they're about to smoke up here, but... Smoke is only on the courier, coming in a little bit too late. Instead, it's Hydra coming with a smoke. Going around Where's here, there? Ursa. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the Sobat bought a gem, handed it over to Malreen. So it looks like they're just yeah, sweeping through, get rid of some of this vision. They're connecting. But they were completely scouted by an Observer Ward. Rubik coiled up. Lil, gonna meet his demise here, it looks like. Stealing a couple of spells and turning back onto the Monkey King. Storm Spirit zipping deep, trying to kill up Hellscream quickly. The Pug Calls have been grabbed up, and there we go. Even with the Global Sans coverage, they lose two heroes off the back of that Rubik kill. A TP out from Bazia. Wow. Successfully home. No bashes for the Ursa. Yeah, he should sell that basher. It doesn't work. That Abyssal <laughs> Blade is broken. Faulty. Ah, you trade it. When you upgrade to Abyssal, you know, you lose the passive bash, but you get the active stun. It's a uh, oh. bad trade. Pathetic. Well, Violet's got to be careful now. He's farming out Ancients on the left side of the map. So look at who's coming. Cloud of the Concoction. Violet, I mean, do you, beat, yeah, do you BKB this? He said, I absolutely do. Stun durations on BKB look so weird. You know, running around with a stun bar over you. It, it, <laughs> I think the visual shouldn't be there if you're not actually stunned. It just looks about me. <laughs> Keep running. Oh, watching, uh, watching a Shadow Shaman stand there and shackle you while you're BKB'd. Like, nothing's oh, yeah. happening to you, but he's just going, hey, I'm tired. There's a lot of funny visuals, like um, Pounce, I think, from Slark also gets dragged out. It just, like, extends. Making lines all over the map. Okay, I'm going to slow down a fair a... bit here. Go for a smoke up again here in Amiga. The last fight didn't really go the way they Radiant wanted, but they're scanning. gonna go immediately again. They do have the Doom still. They gotta try and get value out of that big ability. And Roche back up in 40. That's what Amiga are hoping for. It's just this, this Bloodseeker is, is so incredibly poor as a, a carry in this game. 6,000 net worth behind his Bloodseekers. That's, you know, a, a tier one item he's missing out on. Yeah, it really is. He's uh, far behind, and Cloud managed to get out of that situation. He was dangerously close to the smoke, but just dropped a little acid spray, and then he realizes, maybe I shouldn't be here, and he just backs out. Oh, mighty, mighty. And he's got, not going to connect and get what they want here either. What is it? It's, it's three minutes till day, so it's nighttime, dire Roche. Yeah, they were kind of angling towards that bottom right-hand corner of the map. Is under hmm? attack. But Hydra are the ones in the better position. Cool. Yeah, I mean, they're... Roche and respawns. Roach, I'm sorry, your life expectancy is probably not more than three minutes here. I don't think you're going to get to travel to your new apartment in the radiant the sunny, sunny lanes. You know, you're, yeah. you're going to die over here, buddy. So very quickly to this, uh, sir. Dropping Radiant. greater healing lotuses on the floor as well. Uh, I guess you gotta pass that over to Storm, maybe even. Uh, Caldo has it for now. You can use it on... Uh, on allies as well, right? So you can uh, feed them it. Yeah, you can shove it. Use chakra and that. Otto is the giver of mana after all. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Well, I guess Namiga kind of knowing they can't brute force their way into a roast contest situation, getting a little bit of additional farm, pushing this bottom lane. Namiga about to get the yeah. biggest win here for uh, quite a while now. They're about to get a wisdom rune at least. Oh, so, Radiant's top tower yeah. is under attack. Something. One for one on the Wisdom Rune this time. Every 
little helps. I can see the total damage done. Storm Ursa right up at the top. Where's, where's Bloodseeker? Yeah, you have to keep scanning down that list to look for Bloodseeker. He's 5,000. Yeah. He has not connected into the game in a nice way at all. Some tier 3 neutral items as well. Titan Sliver for Ursa and Storm. Status resist. Very, very good. Yeah, that's a, a great item. The. The resistance will be useful here because there's so many debuffs that Namiga want to put on you. So why not? Oh, why not go for it? And that's also the same reason why we see, Radiance you know, them going for that DKB on Storm. You just want to get rid of stuff. And Alchemist even going for the Lotus Orb was also an interesting choice. He could have gone for it on Caudal, but instead of having it out on Alk, makes sense. He needs armor. Oh! oh stack a bunch play. of oh, Lil. Lil. I didn't, but I'm watching it now. What did he do, Waga? He used the shard to lift himself and slam himself down on the tree that he saw Monkey jump on mid lane that was no gonna fight way. again. Doom? Storm? Puck? Nearly dead? Concoction? Cloud can't connect it onto the Puck. Face shifting, jumping away, and the Storm will die. Doomed up and killed. Well, this back sending Cloud away. That was a nice pickoff. They get a really important kill there. And look at the amount of gold he gave. Oh my god. Yep, he uh, he just gave away 1,600 gold for that uh, <laughs> kill right there, so it's a high-value target for sure. A Bloodseeker with a hop, skip, and a jump getting like 800 gold from one kill. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that's the start of something Radiance for them. They have 16,000 gold lead to try and climb. This is uh, a lot of work. Scared. Normally... When you see that gold lead, you're like, oh, well, they have Alchemist. Of course they have a gold lead. Well, no, not really. Alchemist is actually behind the enemy offlaner. The, uh, you know, offlaner is not where the difference is. It's just mid and carry. You have this massive gap, especially on the carry front. Radiance Ursa is absolutely is enormous. Man, there's so many steroids to pump into them as well. Like you been talking about this Cottle, the Alchemist, all these auras buff stacking up on this Ursa and Storm. True, get the Real Alchemist fearful. shard as well. Literally a steroid. Give him the oh, Berserk yeah. potion. Doesn't have it yet, of course. He's going for an Octarine, it seems. Uh, I mean, what, what's that movie that came out recently with Cocaine Bear? Oh yeah, Cocaine we, we Bear. Berserk, <laughs> berserk potion Ursa in this one. I've only seen the trailer, that seems Radiance like the craziest. Me too. Um, I'll have to watch that. <laughs> I think it's like a movie you should watch when you're tired kind of movie. Uh, tired, yes. yes. Radiance middle Definitely not sober. <laughs> no. <laughs> Goodness gracious me. So what, what is it now for Namiga? Just hold high ground and, and try and fight around your tier 3s? I'm looking. Honestly, I'm struggling and looking for outs here. They they have the Nullifier coming in on a Hellscream support monkey thing. That could be a big thing because Nullifier is insanely good against Ursa. It removes the uh, overpower. Uh, so dispelling that removes, you know, the majority of his DPS since you need that attack speed. But yeah, they, they don't have much to play for right now. Mid. Oh, oh the lift into kill and no buyback. That might just be game over. So bad he's dead as well. 50 seconds with no Bloodseeker. Nowhere near buyback. They don't have the best building damage ever, but they're very confidently just stepping up on this high ground now as they get those double pickoffs there. Ursa will definitely be able to play mid here if they don't mount some form of Wukong's defense, but how do you even do that? Now you know, who, who needs overwhelming damage when you've got all these heals? Illuminate, Mac, Havis, everything being shoved on him. So I'm going to clear out that bottom wave at the same time. There's a region room. There's an Arcan room waiting to bottom for him if you want that. But it's going to be melee racks falling. They don't have coil available, so right now you just got to keep working on that no fire. They get that complete right now on monkey at least. The uh, courier snipes the gem. Take it. No, he didn't realize. Oh, unfortunate. Oh yeah, you're right. There goes that entire mid lane. I just got to be hoping for your next ability to go forward. Yeah, this is uh, this is rough, but I think this is like a last last ditch effort here. The smoke coming out from Namiga. I think they understand how far behind they are and that Die. this game is not I'll getting scan. better by the minute. So they just have to make it play immediately. Fox is going to show mid and push the wave because if he doesn't, it's way too obvious. Arcane Rune Storm though. With the Lincolns. How do you control this man in the next fight? Oh, it's so hard. 
But yeah, they've got to know. You know Aegis is gone. Enemy have Going taken around. the barracks and they've fallen back. Keeping the long angle here. The smoke's about to expire, though. self stun on the concoction. Monkey King on the high ground. He sees the Kotal, sees the Ursa. They just gotta go. They gotta go. They have to jump. But the Rubik's the one to make the first move. Bloodseeker is the one to get caught initially. And the puck blown up. Oh, that's gotta be over now. Vanity trapped inside. Three heroes grasp. We get taken down by the Ursa. And step by step, Hydra will dominate an Amiga here in game two. Yeah, this, this game is pretty much decided by that fight. They're dead for 40 seconds and everyone, they're falling over towards their base. They're about to do some more structural damage so bad. He's trying to use his curse to push out top lane, but there's a creep wave mid, there's a creep wave bottom. You know, you, you didn't have time Poor to guy. fix the lanes properly. Every time Cloud uses a chat wheel line or, or something in chat, I see his dot hydra esports underscore gg. I see the <laughs> gg and my brain goes, yeah, they called it, it's game over. No, no, that's just someone's name. <laughs> yep. Having GG in the nickname. Built in. Oh, another lane. We will all respawn on Amiga before this is over. Alright, yeah. best of three. You don't want to give up just yet. You want to try and take it the distance. I mean, it's like you said. Every game matters so much here in the DPC. And I think maybe they will just back up and play Discipline here. Look at Hydra, dude. I would have expected them to just commit for the push here. With how dominant they have been. But even though they don't have long cooldowns they rely on. They just say, you know what? The game is not getting worse for us by the minute. Let's just sit back. The only way they lose the fight is, or lose the game is by losing a lot of fights right now, I think. So they back up. They're going to work towards a little bit more items here before they take next engagement. And this has to feel so bad for Namiga. You would rather want it to be all over already or, you know, have that one fight where you can maybe come back. Now instead, eyes on controlling the next Roche. Both teams heading top. Honestly, it's probably Lil saying, hey, I'm having like a record-breaking game on Rubik. I want to see all the stats at the end saying I am the best. He's, he's got Aghanim Scepter, Blink, Boots of Travel. He's working on a BKB on this support Rubik. Yeah, he, he just wants something against the Global Silence as well and the Puck Coil, you know. It's a great item for him here next. But uh, yeah, he's crazy overfarmed. Well, let's see. Roshan timer. How are we looking? Big man's back up quickly. Yeah, he's got to spawn in 15, but the fight is about to start soon. Alchemist confidently showing himself. Knows that if they go on him, he's pretty tanky. Storm and still has Amiga cheese, just... by the way. He has that burst of mana and HP when he needs it. Oh, you're right, he does. All they need is that little bit of vision. Radiant the Radiant have this high ground ward on the portal. Alk blindly going in, flailing a bit, not their connects. Radiant Scan sees where they're all coming from as well, so Namiga can hold this area still. <laughs> They've kind of shifted positions now. Suddenly it's Hydra behind the side of Namiga. Namiga just playing around the high ground and in those trees. Very hard to break this position, but they TP out the Puck. Puck went bottom. I think this is going to be go time. They see Puck mid. They're going to retake the area, surely. I'm, I'm surprised they're not just rolling in there immediately. Killing a courier. I guess they've got this one ward. They want to try and play around their own vision. Yeah, and they're going now. Just zip zapping across. Can they get jumped by the wall storm? Blinkers pop. Doom is up. They get off the BKB on the storm, so he just stands his ground and fights. The global science comes, and Akami, inside his Wukong's command, he does have to run away from the Bloodseeker and change target to Vazia. They're aiming so many different heroes. As the pug, he's on top of Lil, but the self save with a telekinesis drag back does get him out of danger for a little while. Kami shreds through Violent, though. Bloodseeker's gone. And there's so much left in the tank here for Hydra. They can just keep on going. Target after target. Vazia's up next on the menu. Stunned up and killed. And there's the GG. The real I know difference. it's all over now. Yeah. The real difference in that fight is that they just don't have that much of a carry damage, right? The Maelstrom, Mantha, BKB, Bloodseeker doesn't output that much damage. Whereas the Ursa just shreds people as the fight continues there. They have sustainability to take the fight a little bit longer with all those items on Doom. But a long fight only really favored the side of Hydra even more there. So, uh, yeah, they take it a 33 to 10, much more dominant fashion than uh, game one here. But that so much has to go back to that first rotation. I think the Amiga were in a great spot, but that first move, it felt like after that, they were just not really sure on how they could get back in the game. Yeah, it's like they, they really wanted to get on top of that storm and, and, and shut him down as best they could, but I think they lost so much. So much momentum from their Bloodseeker, from their side lanes, it, it all crumbled very quickly from there. 
Uh, really, really well. Like, like Lil, outstanding performance. Real phenomenal oh, yeah. performance on this Rubik, stealing coil multiple times. The uh, tree but... play with the shard. He saw the Beautiful. monkey for a split second jump onto a tree. He quickly realizes, I can just put myself up in the air and then slam down on a tree. Breaks the tree, stuns the monkey, catches him. I mean, it's just a quick presence of mind to, uh, you know, most people would think about it, but he did it very, very rapidly when that happened. So very prepared to make that play. Um, yeah, they all just looked sharp. I mean, this was great. I want to give, you know, a little bit of an honorable mention to Cloud here, who went 3-0-18 and looked really dominant in the fights later on as Alchemist when he had no lane. He was so underfarmed. He had nothing at all. Yeah, we were looking at him five, six minutes in. He had like 18 CS when everyone else was like 30 last hit. So yeah, it was a, it was a challenging one for him. But you're loving the item build too. The Solar Crest, Lotus Orb, Blink Dagger. He was Initiation. He was buffs. He was making sure that Ursa and Storm had a good time. Yeah, very, very well executed. Some cool uh, cool drafts there from Hydra as well. So 2-0 victory to start off their Division 1 Tour 3 run. Always good to get that one win under your belt. And Namiga, you know, coming up from Div 2, not, not a bad showing either. I, I wouldn't call it, it sloppy or any any you know, drastic drastic mistakes in drafting or gameplay. Just, you know, you look back at the replay and you say, we, we made one mistake in game two and that just spiraled out of control completely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's tough. I think first game, they can't really beat themselves up too bad about how they played in it. But second game, that was just a decision they made, like, let's commit when the monkey was caught there. And I think... They're going to kick themselves a little bit about that because um, that really was the turning point of the game. But uh, congratulations to Hydra, I guess, who had a very strong showing here, I would say. They they made it look pretty easy against Namiga, despite the odds. Yeah, so that rounds things up for our first series, and we are on a uh, time slot schedule. So I think we've got about 30, 40 minute break until the next one. So a best of three between one move and Walaikum coming up in about half an hour. So make sure you get yourselves you know, a lunch, snack, whatever, whatever you want to go and go and grab, keep yourself hydrated, and we'll be back in a few for the next best of three.